Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Wrestling Report, Prime Time Wednesday. It's the Midweek Delight. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Octavius of Tiberius, the alleged backyard one-time knockouts, diva, straight edge, hardcore, Hall of Famer, hero, and uh, on a stormy day here in Milwaukee on Wednesday, April 17th, we're looking back at WrestleMania, David Hero. It's just a couple of weeks removed, but each year, as we go in-depth here, each year after the showcase of the Immortals, known as WrestleMania, the wrestling world tends to go into a bit of a down period. This can be attributed to many different factors, such as the spring and summer months pulling many away from their TVs, or lack of satisfaction with the actual event, or just simply the way fans have been conditioned over the years. In this in-depth segment, we want to talk about how WWE can avoid this annual down period and keep momentum through the summer. David, the, the Raw after WrestleMania has long been a big show, and last this year was no different. The, 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 that particular Raw gave us a brand new World Heavyweight Champion, gave us the Fandango craze starting, and gave us a different, uh, different look at Ryback. But even with all this, can WWE continue to rely on the likes of The Undertaker, Triple H, and even a Brock Lesnar to keep our interest through the very long summer months? They're going to have to, because right now you have going into Extreme Rules, which was formerly Backlash a couple years ago. Hooks. Right. My favorite set. was always like the rematches from WrestleMania. Absolutely. Because they felt business wasn't taken care of. You got Brock Lesnar versus, let's just say, Triple H in the cage. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen, obviously. Uh, then you have Ryback and John Cena. But you're missing Undertaker. CM Punk might not be back by then if he's taking some time off. You're not going to have The Rock, so you're missing three of the of the headliners from WrestleMania. But keep in mind, though, next week on Raw, we do have The Undertaker involved in a six-bank tag team matchup. But, it could lead to a match of Extreme Rules. I doubt it. I don't think Taker's going to do three matches in a month and a half. It's been more than he's done in the last three years. Exactly. That's why, <laughs> you know, I don't think that's going to happen. And right now, WWE needs to create bigger stars, and they've done that to a certain degree with Ryback, mm -hmm. who was a big star, but now elevated to top of the card, main event, That's and he is a threat to John Cena. Absolutely. He absolutely is. Um, Dolph Ziggler, who has been elevated, but now has the world title around his waist. My only concern with that is that Dolph Ziggler isn't head and shoulders above Del Rio and Swagger right now. They haven't booked him strong enough that they should be chasing him. It's still like Ziggler is still trying to get his credit where credit is due. Well, he is endorsed. That's all the credit he but needs. But I understand your endorsements. I get that. And then we go with Brock Lesnar, who comes out and demolishes 3 MB. Don't get that at all. Well, they had to set up the But promo. here's the thing. If Brock Lesnar is the heel, why is he coming out and beating up more heels? I don't know if it's he would have been be better off going out there and beating up Kali and Santino and Hornswoggle. I think that would have gotten him more heat than beating up 3MB. Yeah. So how do they maintain the momentum? How do they avoid the WrestleMania hangover? Well, how do we bridge the gap between April and basically August where SummerSlam it's, is generally it's, the reset period? It's going to have to be Ryback. And who I never ever would have thought, I'd say Ryback is the guy that can help them avoid the hangover. Fandango's going to fade. Uh, he taught you Monday night. Fun. Listen, it doesn't make a difference. Fun. But Ryback, he, he, he's an amazing character on TV right now. He's got a little bit of depth now, which well, he grossly needed. Well, here's the thing with, with, with Ryback and John Cena. They're not really going to boo Ryback because they're already booing John Cena. They're going to want to see Ryback beat John Cena. And Ryback calls himself Doomsday to John Cena Superman. My only problem with that is if you read the comic, Superman eventually beat Doomsday. Who reads comics anymore? Oh, please. All they do. All of them. Linda does. So Ryback and Cena, I think, has potential if given time to develop properly and let the Ryback character gain momentum, could go through SummerSlam. I don't see Ryback and Cena being a one or two month pay-per-view. I could see it being May, June, July, and ending up in August. Look at 2012, WrestleMania 28, Miami, Rock, Cena, night after Brock Lesnar comes back in Miami. 
Do you feel that we entered a uh, lull period after that WrestleMania weekend last year? Uh, no, because Extreme Rules was good. Yeah. So it seems as if already this year, this week, some two weeks removed from WrestleMania, we're beginning to take the exit to that lull. But what hurts right now after this WrestleMania is Rock getting hurt not being at Raw. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of having the big Brock Lesnar after WrestleMania, you know, like how he came out last year, yeah. we got Fandango. That was the, you know, and then it, Dolph Ziggler winning the world, you know, by cashing in. So would you rather have the buzz of Brock Lesnar taking out John Cena, or would you rather have Fandango and Dolph Ziggler? Is that a drop-off as far as you're concerned? Because to me it is. From a surprise and shock factor, yeah, it's absolute drop-off. Yeah, so if, you're, if, if WrestleMania to WrestleMania is their fiscal year, if that's, you know, like, you know, their reset, mm -hmm. this year's reset wasn't as strong as it was last year. Well, the year before it wasn't as strong as it was last year. Last year was a bit of an anomaly. I mean, Brock Lesnar, seven years removed from the company, not ever expected to come back, packed his bags and left in 2004, comes back unexpectedly. They couldn't replicate that. Much like a lot of people are talking about how bad the crowd was this past Monday night from Greenville, South Carolina, because they weren't that wild crowd from New Jersey. It's all relative, folks. This crowd this past Monday night actually reacted the same way that crowds typically do to everything that happened. It was just that they weren't that crowd in New Jersey. But the comparison is difficult to make. But the responsibility falls on WWE to keep us as fans engaged throughout the entire summer, but they don't have as many resources as they would hope to have to do that. I mean, right now, if you're going to pick the top four guys on Raw. Dolph Ziggler, Cody Rhodes, on Damian Sandow. On Raw. Ziggler is really a SmackDown guy. He's the world. Okay. He doesn't count. You Rose got Clay. You got Heath Slater. You got Cena. You got Ryback. Punk is a question mark because he's out, and you really can't have Triple H and Brock Lesnar because they're part time. Well, here's a Sheamus and Orton are really on on SmackDown brand. They don't they they don't have five deep right now on Raw. I dispute that being able to count Brock Lesnar and Triple H because if they want. Granted, yes, they're part-time, but part-time, you're talking relative to a 12-month year. If they're part-time and from WrestleMania to Extreme Rules, they're there every week and they're part of the but we're story, saying, they're but, full-time but, 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 but the question you asked is, can they sustain from the now yeah. to SummerSlam? Yeah. And with only four, right now there's only two full-time top guys because Punk has taken time off for injuries, Triple H is part-time, Brock Lesnar is part-time. There's only two guys right now. Two main event guys on the Raw roster. And you're saying that's right back in Cena. It is. The rosters don't matter. House shows are combined. Brand split is, brand split is essentially gone. So you can throw in a Randy Orton. You can throw in a Big okay. Show. Okay, so, so, so you think those three guys are in the top five? No, I'm saying you can throw in. But it. are they in the top five? I think if you need top five and you have two, those would be the first three you'd add to that top five. To make it a top five, mm -hmm. yes. So they would be in the top five. That's, that's disappointing. Really? What yes. don't you like about Randy Orton? I just think that Sheamus is going to be stuck with Mark Henry. Orton obviously is going to go forward with, you know what? The top five, Cena, Ryback, and The Shield. Nah, The at Shield all. are far more over no, than anybody not. else besides Ryback and Cena. Absolutely. No, they're not. No, you they're don't not. think they're more over I not think so at all. than they're Sheamus not. or Randy Orton? Chris Jericho? Shields he's more, in the top five. Don't, no, he's not. Absolutely not. Of course they are. Did you hear that pop on Monday night? Did you hear that pop last week? Did you hear the pop but at But every time you hear the Shields music, the crowd pops. Not as huge as they do for Jericho. What? Are you still Jer watching it? Jericho mode? is, no, Del Rio is, was more on SmackDown than he is on Raw right now. But Jericho gets the nostalgia pop. He gets the rock pop. You can say the same thing sure. about Lesnar. But, but it's a bigger pop than the Shield. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I think because Jericho has louder pyro, it sounds louder. Randy Orton still gets an amazing reaction from the, from the mainstream I, crowd. I, I agree, but I'm just saying he's not one of the top five guys on Raw right what now. What does it take if not the reaction of the fans to make him a top five guy? I think it has to be. There's, so, there's just so much more than just a crowd pop. Absolutely, there is. Yeah, there is. There's no doubt about it. 
So that's... But what are those things? Credibility, believability, involvement in major storylines, involvement in championship titles. When was the last time Randy Orton's won a big match? Well, I... Yeah. I have to put the interns on that. Well, okay. But off the top Didn't of... Didn't he win this match Off Monday the night? top of your dome, you can't... It was a handicap match. Didn't he win? He didn't get the pinfall. His team won. But it doesn't. I'm saying, when was the last time Randy last Randy time was, Orton won? When's the last time he was put in a big time match? He's been put in a lot of big time matches in the last year. Such as? He's been in there with um, the Shield. He's been in there with uh, Big Show, Mark Henry. Mm -hmm. there, there's been quite a few. Mm -hmm. Dolph Ziggler. Mm -hmm. He hasn't beaten those guys. Randy Orton is stuck in neutral. He's hitting his head on the glass ceiling. He can't break through. <laughs> So, and and Seamus, I like Seamus. I've been a Seamus guy from the beginning. But I think he's going to have his hands full with Mark Henry. Oh, absolutely. And I'm intrigued by that story. By, by and that, by that I matchup, would not be surprised if Mark Henry gets the best of Seamus early on because they need more established, credible heels. And let's not forget, that's what he does. Well, it is what he does. He beats people up. So pick it. Picture it. Sicily, 2013. What? What? Well, first of all, I'm not going to be in Sicily. WWE's across the pond right now. They're over... They're in, in Scotland. Well, it's all the same. European. Okay. Yeah. Italy and Scotland are so similar. I said... You, you said Scotland. I said Italy. Right. Um, but anyways, what can they do? What's Corned that beef big, and lasagna. What can Seriously? They, bangers and mash. What can they do? David Hero, what, not what they have done or what they should do, what can they do? Well, if you were the man making the big decision, if you were VKM or Stephanie or Triple H, what would you do? How would you incite and get the crowd emotionally invested into your product for the next two to three months? Being or overseas for Raw Monday is going to be interesting. It's going to be fantastic. Well, maybe. It's going to be fantastic. May maybe. Fantastic. May no, it might not be. Because That's a new word. No, 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 no. Let's listen. See if we can get that approved. Fantastic. Go ahead and do all the paperwork and stuff for that so we don't can take Here's it. Here's what I think could be the potential problem. What's okay? that? Is that international fans aren't the same as the fans here in the States. Or okay? International. They cheer for different things than we do. I mean, we're I'm more. Like we're more. Well, no, I, I <clears> think <throat> that the American fans cheer for the heels more than the international fans do. Okay. Okay? So. That could be a confusing delivery on television. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let's say that Vince wants Cena to be the baby face. Yeah. Okay? Now, this is going opposite of what I'm trying to explain, but Ryback's been a baby face mm -hmm. for quite a while. The international fans might cheer for Ryback more than John Cena. Only because... It's what they're familiar with as Ryback being the babyface. Or anti-Cena. Maybe so those fans. It, it, stuff like that can change the, the course of a plan. I mean, look what happened with Hogan and Rock. Nobody expected it to be 80-20 Hogan and Rock with, with, with right. the audience. And they wanted having to change the direction of that match. Right. So going overseas, Wade Barrett's going to get a huge pop. Um, it's probably a good thing that, that 3 and B got beat up because Back Drew McIntyre. How about what they did with them tonight on main event? Big Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal. Justin Gabriel wins that, and then Barrett strongly handedly beats Gabriel, puts a little bit of shine on the Intercontinental Championship. He a little did. bit. He did, exactly. And need, that needed to happen going into next week. Mm -hmm. He needs to be the strong champion because he's going to get an amazing ovation oh, yeah. on Monday Night Raw. But it's, it's going to be a different delivery across the television. People thought that the IZOD fans were, were just loud and crazy. It's going to be the exact same thing overseas. And that may not be what the office wants or needs right now, how they cheer and boo some of their stars. Let's also not forget what we're going to get next week out of WWE programming is wrestling. Historically, when they've gone across the pond, they've given us some tremendous wrestling matchups. Remember that big matchup between John Cena and, and uh, Shawn Michaels from a couple of years back? They went uh, almost well, Iron Man okay, style. But, okay, but match. right now, without CM Punk, there is no Shawn Michaels type worker on the Raw roster. Dolph Ziggler, Cody Rhodes. They are in uh, SmackDown. Kofi Kingston. No, SmackDown. Okay, what, can I tell you again? The brands are no longer split. It does not matter. Okay. You've seen all these people on Raw for the last how many weeks? Because the it's the Super Show. 
It's not a super show anymore. It's I, raw. It's still the super show You're to me. You're stuck in the past. This way. Yeah, it's still real to you, damn it. Isn't yes, it? it is. Well, we're interested to hear what you all think about WWE and its direction going forward and how the WrestleMania hangover can be cured, if you will. So interact with us, with us uh, right here on How YouTube. do you cure your hangovers? I never get a hangover. You just keep drinking? Uh, PWRshow.com as well. You can comment there. Also on Twitter, at PWRshow on Twitter and on Facebook, facebook.com slash PWRshow. David, here we touch briefly on the Intercontinental Championship. This Saturday on Primetime Saturday Night, we're going to go in-depth looking at the championships and why they do or don't matter in WWE and in professional wrestling overall right now. That this Saturday on the Pro Wrestling Report Time Time Saturday night. So for that one, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in to Primetime Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow night for Interactive Live and then Saturday for Primetime Saturday night. So